In our simple pick project, we wrote all of our C code in a single file, and we compiled that file and assembled it to object code, linked it with some microchip object code, and created an executable. Uh, that's fine for a very simple program, but for some programs, we may find it convenient to spread the code into multiple C files. Then all of those C files will be compiled individually and assembled into object code and linked to make the final program. So only one of those C files can have a main function or else there would be an error at the linking stage. So if we find that some of those individual C files have functions that are useful for other projects, not just for this project, we might consider taking that C file and turning it into a library. And for us, we'll say a library is a C file and associated header file. That header file has function prototypes for the functions that the C file makes available to other C files. And it also might define constants or data types that are used in the C file. So an example of such a situation is the talking pick project. Talking pick, talking pick uses the NU32 library, which consists of a C file and a header file. And the NU32 library's job is to give us some simple communication functions to talk back and forth over the USB cable with your laptop. So let's take a look at talking pick. So the first thing that talking pick does is it includes nu32.h. And uh, we don't include xc.h because we write nu32.h now to include it for us. Okay. So we include nu32.h. We'll take a look at that header file in a moment. Uh, the rest of this function, all it does is it calls something called nu32startup. Since that doesn't have a function prototype anywhere in this file, it must be defined in nu32.h. So it calls something called NU32 startup. And then it calls these other three NU, or other two NU32 commands, read UART3 and write UART3. And all it's doing, if you remember what simple pick does, is it reads what the user types in their terminal emulator, and then it writes it back to the terminal emulator so it can be displayed on your screen. And then uh, we can also see over here that we're going to toggle the LEDs after this is done every time. And NU32, LED1, and LED2 must also be defined in, in NU32.h because they're not defined in this file. So let's go take a look at NU32.h. And NU32.h consists of an include guard. So up here what it's looking to do is it's seeing if um, if the constant nu32 un double underscore h has yet been defined during the compilation into this, uh, into this assembly or object code. And if it hasn't been defined, then it's going to define it. And, um, and not only that, it's going to run through the rest of this. But if it already has been defined, if it's already got NU32H defined during this compilation, then it knows NU32.H has already been included uh, within this compilation to object code. And you don't want to include it twice, so it's going to then skip all of this down to the end if. So this is called an include guard. Only include NU32.H. Uh, if it hasn't already been included. You could imagine including one file, which includes another file, which includes the original file again, and then you could end up with circular inclusions and then uh, including file multiple times. You don't want to do that, and that's what this uh, include guard does. Now, in, once we get inside of here, we're going to include xc.h, and that's what gives us access to all the special function register um, variable declarations. Uh, we're also going to make available this uh, header file sysattribs.h, which allows us to use interrupt service routines, and that's something we'll learn about later. Uh, in addition, we define these two constants, NU32LED1 and NU32LED2. They might be simpler to remember than latfbits.latf0, so you can use those instead as shorthand. Uh, we also define this constant NU32User, uh, again, so you don't have to remember which uh, digital input um, corresponds to the user button. And in case it's useful for the user, we also define the system frequency, NU32 sysfreq, to be 80 million, because that's what the CPU processor is running at. 
Finally, we have these three function prototypes. They're the ones that we saw in talkingpick.c. NU32 startup, which does some um, initialization functions. Read UART that reads what's coming in from uh, the PC or the laptop. And write UART, which writes back to the laptop. If we want to see how these are implemented, then we can open NU32.c and see the actual functions.